Hey everybody, welcome to another one of Chris's beer reviews. Today I'm going to be drinking the Fuller's 2011 Vintage Ale. Uh, I'm really, really happy to be uh, doing this one with you all. We got we got a giant, um, you know, bunch of information here that I'd rather not read you, you know, directly with. So, you know, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it on the d description down below. So, uh, you know, if you really want to get into that far. At least you have, uh, you know, another way that you can do it. <clears throat> so, the unveiling. Got the wonderful Fuller's 2011 Vintage Ale. Uh, we got a 500 milliliter bottle here at 8.5% ABV. Uh, again, there is more writing on the back here. I will uh, throw that on the description down below. So, it, anything you know that you're missing on any of the the scripts here, you're going to be getting on there regardless. So, uh, all right, we got a Awesome, awesome. Uh, oh, Fuller's didn't do it this time. Uh, if, if you look at the last Fuller's video that I did, which was, I believe, the uh, double stout, um, they had kind of more of a, uh, it's kind of like a more of a plastic uh, cover with, with their label on it, so that when you peeled it off, uh, you were able to get, you know, this, the sticker off of the actual lid. Because, you know, sometimes whenever I do my reviews, you know, it's kind of lame, but I like to keep the lids from the reviews that I did. You know, kind of remind me of all the beers that I've reviewed. So uh, yeah, here it goes. Um, <clears throat> I, I did review theirs last year, but unfortunately, uh, that vid video was botched. So uh, yeah, I, I can't really explain it any further than that. There we go. I, I would actually, if you really do want to get, you know, the full effect of, of a of a beer review video, I, I would highly recommend that you do read the description and actually find out more about this beer before I'm drinking it. Um, it'll give you a little bit more of an understanding of the background uh, of this beer and the contents within. All right, so uh, you know, I poured this into my Erdinger glass, uh, another wonderful uh, beer out there. I, I didn't pour it as cleanly as I could have, so we got about a, a three-finger head here, off-white colored head, um, actually gorgeous looking color. You, you got a very, very orange, um, kind of extremely light copper tone uh, looking color to it. So that is really, really cool. I'm actually picking up on some uh, some fruitiness in there. Definitely got some up my nose. Give me one second, people. Best before 2014. All right, I'm, I'm just going to go in and, and get the, the, the full effect here, people. Woo! Uh, I definitely was, was right about the the fruitiness of this beer. There's incredibly dark, fruity undertones to this beer. Um, you're, you're, you're getting it all over your tongue. It's all, it, It's got a very nice hoppy taste to it. So when I'm talking about a, a, a fruitiness, I am not talking about a a sweet or a sour uh, a sourness to the beer whatsoever. It's just really like a, like I said, dark fruity undertone hops. Wow, it's really really good. Unbelievable, actually. Wow, you really uh, wow. Whew. that's an amazing beer. It's eight point five percent, people. But as it's going down, it really it really tastes somewhere around uh, 6.5, maybe 7% uh, ABV. You're not getting like a, a full 8.5% ABV uh, slam. The sounds you were hearing before me is my cat making strange noises. <laughs> Very, very nice head. Uh, 
very playful lace. I I'm really really digging this this beer so far. Wow, you know what? Uh, for those beer snobs out there, if you're familiar with the uh, Double Dead Guy Ale, it would be safe for me to say that this is almost identical to a Double Dead Guy Ale. Um, and I'm talking about the Rogue's Double Dead Guy Ale here. This is almost identical to the Double, um, except it actually it has a little bit more of a pungent effect to it. <laughs> That's the best way that I can explain it. It's uh, very nice and sweet. It's, I guess you could say it's on the heavy side. I'm guessing the sugar content level is somewhere uh, between a three and a four. Um, it's definitely nice and sweet. You know, I'm, I'm sticking with a four, actually. Uh, I don't know if any anybody here has checked out the glass, but um, the Erdinger, I guess this is kind of like the brewery, uh, or the town surrounding the brewery, uh, one or the other, uh, very, very, very cool. <clears throat> this beer is actually incredible. Um, I'm, I'm incredibly pleased with it. Um, all right, well, you know what, I'm going to finish this, I'm going to join myself, and uh, I would I would actually recommend uh, allowing this beer to cool down a bit. It's definitely one of those beers that can be truly enjoyed from a, a cold perspective as well as a, a, a you know a warm warmer approach. Um, so yeah, play around with it. It's fun. It's uh, it's a really really good beer if you like trying new things. Uh, it definitely does not taste um, like your average beer. <laughs> I don't pick up on a strong barley taste whatsoever, but the sweetness of this beer is just absolutely perfect. I, I'm, I'm actually quite blown away. So uh, there you have it, people. I, I'm going to give this a an amazing 4.7 out of 5. Okay, this is a this is a really really good beer. So I definitely recommend that you go out and give it a try. So uh, thanks for joining me on another one of Chris's beer reviews. Don't drink and drive. Drink responsibly.